Hi everyone. I'm going to ooh, <laughs> forget what's open behind me. <laughs> I'm going to give everybody a little time to jump in. So I'm just going to do a little straightening here. So I am listening. Hi. Hi, Terry. Okay, so I see some people popping on. Hi, Linda. Diana. It's weird because, and I apologize for looking two places, the comments disappear. I'm alive. <laughs> the comments disappear really quickly on YouTube, so if you see me looking down, I'm just scrolling back through. So, were you worried I wasn't alive? I'm good. I'm going to show you guys, hi Marlene, how to use the um, Big Shut big shot die cutting machine for three different things today. I've had a lot of people who have asked about this late, lately, specifically um, a few of my customers. Hi, Amy. So I thank you all for joining me today. I'm sorry it was kind of a uh, short notice. Let me put this. Because I try to give as much notice as possible. Oh, you're watching on your television. How fun. So you have my ginormous head on your screen, huh? <laughs> So I'm just trying to clear space. I'm going to show um, you guys something else I made. I made these cute, happy Friday, yes. And it's great to be here on a Friday. Other half is off today, so I was able to squeeze in a little more time. But look at these little Mother's Day cards I made. Let me block out this light again. So I did these. There we go. I did these like the ones I showed you the other day. So they can fold flat, and they do fit in an envelope. But I thought they were really fun. And what I did was I actually put a, um, a glue dot here so they can assemble it. And then I put a little piece of um, acetate, like the really thin acetate that comes with the cards. And that way when they get it at home, they can pull this off and put it together. But until then, it stays not stuck. So I hope, hopefully people will know how to assemble them and all you have to do is take the back off. So I thought that was pretty fun, but this is with some obviously very retired paper, but this was such a great paper. It's really, really fun to be able to share with people. So that's why I brought that one out. Okay. So I'm trying to make room. Anyone who loves to see somebody in action would love to see my desk right now because it is a, a holy mess. <laughs> Just put a couple more of these things away and we'll wait for some more people to join. So I decided to do this on YouTube because lately Facebook has been having a little bit of interruptions and I know it's making it very difficult for people to interact and actually ask questions. YouTube seems to be a little bit quicker on the responses so I can post it live. So hopefully if anyone actually has a question about what we're gonna do, I'll be able to answer it. And one other thing I wanted to show you, this was the other card that I made. This light is a stinker today. This is the other card that I made with the tassel. So you can see I used only the very thin tassel for the pop-up. I actually made this for my um, neighbor for my neighbor, the daughter of the neighbor. And um, these are her school colors, so I'm gonna give her this. But I really, I think this one is much better, and I'll show you from this, which was really big, down to, because this one should give you a nice glimpse of the two. It was much thinner. Kill that light again. You can see the, the thickness of the two. It's much thinner. So I really like the pulling the, the, the threads apart. However, the white um, Baker's Twine is retiring. I can't remember if there's something new or not at this moment, but it is retiring. So, and I do like the shorter. I agree. Shorter is much better, Diana. So if you want to get that for tassels, unless you might already have some, which reminds me, I only have, I think this one little spool 
but you never know it might come back um breaking up really bad on YouTube oh really that stinks and I'm on the good Wi-Fi I wonder if, hmm well let me get off of my phone there's not really anybody else on the internet right now so tell me if it still continues to do it if it is breaking up I can go to a different um, I'll just have to stop and start over it's fine over there okay Elizabeth maybe it could be sometimes with your connection because I would hate to be interrupted because that would be totally annoying and completely defeat the purpose of why okay so good hopefully also with the playback it should be okay so I have my desk semi cleaned off here so let me move my beverage out of the way I have started now to always have a drink with me because I tend to um start choking on stuff I don't know if you guys all make me nervous and I start choking <laughs> so what we're gonna do and I didn't really specifically mention the name of what we're gonna use but obviously you know the die cut machine that I have um, so you could probably use this for any machine but this one is really more specifically geared to a big shot machine so what I want to do is I have the multi-purpose platform so this was the original one that used to come with it before Stampin' Up upgraded to a different one so this is the one that actually has three flaps so if you're lucky enough to have this you still can use dies folders and 3d folders because the 3d folders are a little bit iffy so if you have this platform and I'm gonna tell you I cannot exactly remember when I did this video the other day for a customer of mine I'm gonna do my best we might have a little trial and error while we do it but I did was able to do all three die cutting obviously regular embossing but also 3d which I wasn't sure if you could use 3d folders with the big shot unless you had the newer machine or the newer platform but luckily we can hi Stacy thanks for joining hope you're doing well I was just thinking about you the other day so Stacy is a customer of mine that's lucky left to live in Florida and I always tell her to say hello to the ocean <laughs> Okay, so the other thing we have with our big shot, and I'm gonna flip you guys down in a minute, but I'm just gonna show you. I'm not gonna do the precision pl plate because it, for me, is really hard on the dies and I feel like it um, it puts a lot of pressure on them, so I actually stopped using that. But I do love the magnetic plate. Now, obviously, disclaimer, if you have a pacemaker or any other metal device, you don't wanna use this, so just keep that in mind. But the magnetic plate, I like a lot. Um, if your plates are flat so that's one other thing so you really want to have a plate that's nice and flat as opposed to it doesn't work as well on this one anymore because it does have a little bit of a bow as you can see there but it's definitely a lot better Stampin' Up! is making their dies no that is not correct you can use it still with absolutely any machine but Stampin' Up! is making their own dies and folders now which is um, a, a breakaway from from the machine that we used to have so that's also why they have their own folder or their own machine but you can use them with any machine they did make that very clear you can use them with any machine you have it does not need to be um, the Stampin' Up! new machine and I'm thinking I might get because my big shot is fine and I don't really want to replace it but I think I might get the mini one just to have it to be able to see like when we are able to do classes again how it is to be able to use them um, on like be able to take it with me will that plate be able to be used well here's the thing if you buy the new machine all the plates come with it that you need except for I think the magnetic plate so everything if you buy the machine you get everything to be able to use it right away you just would need to buy the magnetic plate if you like it I'm fairly certain but it's not going to be available when the catalog goes live it is going to take a little bit but you won't have to use your other stuff because you will have new things. So I think I'm going to get the mini one. That way also I can test it and see if I like it. And then the other thing about the mini one that they did say. So obviously you can't put your big folders in the mini one. But they're going to have mini folders. So they're going to come out with a new line of mini folders for specifically for the mini machine which will be nice because you'll still be able to do stuff or you might be able to do some stuff that you couldn't if uh, you could obviously probably put it in the bigger machine but it gives a little bit of appeal of you having something special for the small machine so my plan is to get the small machine and see how it is um, it's it's supposed to be a lot more compact when you close it up it'll be much more compact than having to bring this which this kind of can be sometimes a pain especially going to clubs um, or if you go to scrapping conventions or card making retreats or whatever this is a little bit big to lug however um, 
yes, the mini will be great to have, especially if you have either a small space, because a lot of people do craft in their living rooms or their dining rooms, or they kind of craft and then they have to put it away for the family, which is understandable. So it would be a great addition to be able to have something small, but also to have something you can keep on your desk in case you want to do something, and then you don't have to have a big machine. Now, I have a rolly cart that I got from Ikea that I actually keep my Big Shot on. And it's a three-tier cart. I'm sure you've seen them in lots of places. And instead of the carts all facing up so they can hold stuff, I put the top one on upside down so it's actually like a um, platform. And then I just sit this on top of it. And then the nice part is it rolls. The only thing is it is completely filled with 3D projects underneath. It'll be a great place to keep my folders and stuff, but it's too filled with other stuff. So maybe one day I'll get rid of that stuff. But let me grab, real quick before I flip you over, I'm going to grab um, a regular folder, a 3D folder, and just some dies, and we'll run them through. So, let's see. I'll try to grab a couple things that are actually usable. So, the Pinewood Planks, that's 3D. And then, what else do we have? Uh, this is a good one. And the brick, I'll do that. And then, I will grab the buy the dock bundle because this has stamps and dies so we can do some die cutting anyway so just bear with me and keep in mind I will do my very best to maintain looking at the comments while I do this that way I can we can do something that's kind of interactive so to start I'm gonna have just my regular big shot and I'm going to use just the regular old original three thing platform Okay, so, and I do cutting pads. That's the only other thing I need. So some of these, you will need two cutting pads. Some of them, you only need one. So keep that in mind. We'll go with this as we do. So I'm going to go ahead and flip you around so I can put you down to my desk. All right. And I do thank you guys all for joining me today. We have a very gloomy day here in Maryland. It's rainy. It's supposed to be really cold, which is just insane because Mother's Day is this weekend. And you know that usually means planting season is in season. But I had to cover up all of my uh, banana trees and all my other perennials that I decided to put out. All right. So just to start, basically what we'll do is I'm going to do a die cutting first. And just to make it simple, where in the world? Oh, you know what I forgot is the fact of this. Um, if you have a stamp with it, it's fine. We'll do this anyway. I'm going to stamp something. I'll stamp it a couple times and we'll cut it out. So I'm going to stamp the dock and then we'll cut out the dock. Bring this over. And let's see. So it's not going to be like my best stamping job here only because I don't want to make you wait too, too long while I stamp these. So I'll just do a couple of docks on here. And I saw a really, really cool card that I think I might recreate for um, the Father's Day cards. Or the Father's Day card kit. So if you don't know about that, I am doing a card kit for the month of May. So the deadline, if you want to order for the card kit, is I think it's today or tomorrow. I can't remember which one. Okay, so two things just really quickly. Number one thing. Yeah, having to use shims is annoying. I agree with you. So number one thing, when you have your platform... It does tell you different things that you can do with your platform. So not that I'm trying to encourage you to purchase the new Stampin' Up! thing, but theirs is is a regular plain platform, and they have all the way you use them listed. So that's really, I think, very handy. Because when we got the newer one, it kind of tells you, like, eh, you could use this, but it's very detailed. And the other thing about it is everything is going to be numbered. So they will have, like, the... Uh, the big plate numbered. These will have a number on them and it's going to just be in the corner, um, the magnetic plate. So it kind of helps you as what you need to do to make your sandwich. So if you ever are using your embossing machine, 
And and this doesn't matter what kind it is. And it really seems hard. Don't force it because you could break it. So when you're doing your regular old die cutting, what we're going to do is we're going to put this. And you can even see I die cut on here because I didn't know before. <laughs> A long time ago, I put this one here. So what we're going to do is we're going to put one cutting plate down. And let me move this back in. And then we're going to feed our machine put this in. I'm going to put it in so hopefully you guys can see. And then you're going to put your whatever it is you want down. And then you're going to put your die on top of it. And even if, now obviously this isn't a magnetic one, but even with the magnetic one, sometimes depending on how you have it lined up, sometimes it jumps. So I am still of the school that I like to use a little teeny piece of purple tape or some kind of tape or post-it note or whatever the case may be. So then you would put your second plate on top and then you're going to just crank it through. So it should run smoothly. So you see right now I have very minimal effort on this until I get to the die part. So I could do this with two fingers. It's not a lot of work. So then you will get, now I'm pretty, probably most everybody knows how to do that, but maybe not everybody, uh, not everybody does, but you'll get your die cut, right? So if for some reason, now granted with this one, it'll be a little bit hard, but I'm going to cut something different. If for some reason you were cutting something that's more intricate and you're noticing like, say if we're going to cut this out and you're noticing that like this part down here, pretend this is detailed, it's not cutting out. What you can do is, so we'll just do this with a different one so I can show you what I mean. One that won't matter. So we'll just use this little um, little leaf area, right? So if you can't get it to work, and I'm going to try to go for a spot that doesn't have anything on it, you can actually run it through face up. So if you're going to do that, you obviously need to lay out your whatever it is you want to die cut. And I, this is where the point where I would highly suggest taping it because it's going to be upside down and you're not going to be able to see it. So you could just put like two little pieces, doesn't need to be fresh tape. I've used this tape probably a zillion times. But the one thing you want to do when you do this is you want to move your yucky looking tape or plate that's all cut up to the top. Okay, so instead I'm going to start back out with this again. So this is if you're going to feed it up. You'll put your nice, flat, minimally cut plate on the bottom. And then you're going to put, you have your die situated, you taped it in place or posted noted or whatever, and then you're going to put it face up. And then you're going to put your plate on top of it. So two different ways to die cut. If you have intricate dies, cutting face up really helps because the roller inside is coming in contact with the cutting part of the die directly. So same thing again. I'm just going to crank it. You can see there's very minimal effort. And that way, the nice part about this is you can see if you missed anything. So if, say, this little cattail here wasn't very cut out and you saw, oh, because you know you taped it in place, just put the thing back on and roll it through again, okay? So that's really simple. And then you'll see, we'll pop this out over here. And you have, I mean, this one is just falling out. That's how nicely it cuts, okay? So there is cutting. So I'm going to pause here for a second. I'm going to make sure nobody has any questions. Just going to put my tape here. And I usually will leave my tape stuck on the top of this. That way I have it if I need it. So I'm just going to scroll through. Make sure. Can you use all the new platforms of the machine? I think I answered that one already because that's 1220. Um, new platform. Well, I don't think you would buy the new platforms, Elizabeth, if you were going to use the old machine. Now, if you mean the old folders and the 3D folders and that kind of stuff and the dies, yes, you can use, they said you can use any die, any folder with their machine. So it does not make a difference. You may just have to adjust with your shimming. So if you had to add a little something to it to get it to go through, or you'd have to really take your time. So like I said, if you get to the point where you're put, putting this in and you're hitting a lot of resistance, you really could damage your roller. So you want to be very careful with that part. You went to car class. Oh, you ordered stamp sets today. Awesome. Okay. And with the ornate dies. Okay. So I know that a lot of people have said they have trouble with that. And I'm going to pull out something else. And this is a very good prime example. So if you guys remember, these are the dies that originally went with the Halloween stamp set. And they have a lot of detail to them. Right? So what you can do if 
you're having trouble still, you can do a couple different things. Some people don't like this advice. So if you don't, you can just not listen to it. And that's perfectly fine. You could either run this through once with some cheap wax paper. And I typically would say wax paper from the dollar store because it doesn't seem to be as waxy. Run it through one time. And then if you notice it starts getting stuck again, maybe you could run it through again, but it will last a good amount of time. Or you can try cutting face up. So let me grab, let's see, I have a piece of something here. This was some something or other I tried to do here. So we're going to cut this out and we're going to do the same thing again. So we're going to line it up backwards. So I have this sitting on here. I'm going to put my, I don't have the ornate frame, so I can't tell you, but I can tell you that I have seen people say that they have some issue getting them to cut. So I'm flipping it upside down. So again, remember my die is facing up. So I'm going to put my yucky plate on top since it's already all cut up. So what I would do is when I use this, I will say we're going to run it back and forth before I even take it out. Okay, so we're going to run it one time. And then I'm going to feed it back right back through one more time. And because the other reason is I didn't really like using the um, the dye brush. I don't know why. That thing, I just never really liked it. So you can see on this, it does have a pretty good cut. This part here just wants to fall right out. And this part was kind of at the end. So if you see, this looks really cut and this one's not so much. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn it around and I'll pop it through one more time and this should do it. Now, I know this might be a little bit annoying having to go back and forth many times. It's probably less annoying than wasting paper, which I think that's the thing I do more than anything. So let's see if this pops right out. It should come out pretty easily. That's my taped piece there. So now, at this point, we'll see. So a lot of the pieces are coming out. So try maybe before you do the wax paper, because this has never run, been run through with wax paper. Try running it through face up, so with the cutting portion up. See if that helps. Let's flip this and see what it looks like. So really, that's not too bad. There's only a little couple little doodly do stuck in here. Uh, one other thing that you could do that would be really, really helpful for multiple ways is you can actually put the adhesive sheet on the back of this because this might be a little bit of a pain to glue down anyway. So if you put adhesive sheet onto your cardstock, it actually will pull, um, it cuts a little bit better, but it also pulls away all the little yucky things. So that's another tip for you as well. So I have a couple little things here that I could put out with my poker, except I don't know what I did with my poker. I put it somewhere. I put it away so well, I can't find it. But anyway, that is a, that's a good tip. So doing it, running it through upside down. So let me just make sure I have any other. I know a lot of people were hoping they came out with an electric one, Elizabeth, because a lot of people have issues with cranking. I totally understand that. And I kind of wish they would have too. Maybe in the future they will. I'm not saying I know anything because I absolutely don't, but I know a lot of people, especially people that do make cards, you know, some people from all that cranking, we have a little bit of wrist issues or shoulder strength issues. So you never know. I agree with you on that one though. Having trouble with ornate. So we got that one. Having to use shims. We use the platform. 3D folders too. Yeah. So you should be fine with the 3D folders but again that means if you're going to get your whole new system together so this one is more so just focusing on this so now we're going to go to using a regular embossing folder i'm going to make sure i didn't see anything else here i didn't miss nice and clear in canada well that's wonderful because i think um your uh polar vortex is coming down to visit us <laughs> All right, so I'm going to feed this in backwards. So what I did was, let me show you, and I think I'm correct in doing this. So I'm opening tab two. So I'm just going to feed tab one in. And I do believe we still need, let me see, I'm going to put this through just as is and see. I think we need two, but let me just, just check before I put in my paper. Because you can tell, yep, you wouldn't think that putting in a piece of cardstock would make a lot of difference. But it does, just enough that will make it hard to go through. So this is the um, the brick folder, which I believe is retiring, but I really like this one, so I'll keep it forever. But I'm hoping my pre-order comes next week, and then I can share it with you guys. Let's see. I'm trying to find a piece of scrappy cardstock here I can feed through. 
Lord knows I have enough of it. Hang, hang tight. Hold, please. Okay, so I'm going to just put this piece of plaid through. Now, this I know is DSP, so it's a little bit thinner. So we'll put this just for the heck of it. And I'm going to put a regular piece of cardstock. Here we go. Have a little gray piece. So we have regular cardstock and DSP. So when you do your folders, and I did say this wrong one other time, so I want to make sure that I correct myself. You are going to put your stuff in. You're going to close your folder. And you want it to feed so the connected edge is feeding in. Oh, I'm losing my tape here. So you want it, basically what it's going to do is it's going to be able to push the air as it squeezes it out. Not the way I said. So you want to feed the part that has the bend feeding in. So we're going to set this down. So you see I have tab one. This is on the old platform. I have one cutting plate, one acrylic plate. And then I have, it doesn't really matter which one you use because this isn't making an etching. And then I have one other acrylic plate. So let me see if I can make sure I get this in here correctly. Let's see. All right, and then crank it. So again, this one might take a little bit more effort, but it shouldn't take much. So you can see I'm still pretty loosely holding this. It's not going through with any resistance at all. Okay. So this is just a regular embossing folder, not 3D. And then you can see, oops, this one's so thin it's stuck. But you have, it's probably a little bit hard to see on this one, but you can see the three embossed image on the gray. Okay, so that's a regular embossing folder. So again, regular folder, if you have your old style, you're gonna use tab one, two plates, and your folder, okay? And then, so I'm trying to remember this one. I think for this one, we just take out one of these plates. So I'm going to triple check with a piece and see if it feeds through. So we'll see. I'll just put this piece of cardstock through. And let me just see if this cranks. Because this is the key. Because you can feed it through no matter what. But it may, yep, it may or may not have necessarily enough pressure. And then it'll just go through and come out flat. So if we're using... A 3D folder, so these folders, just to pull this out for a second, you can see are considerably thicker when they're they're closed, right? It's a lot thicker. One other thing, if you don't necessarily have this old base plate and you have the um, the magnetic folder, you don't want to use this with your 3D plates. You don't really want to use this with embossing whatsoever. You want to use this strictly for die cutting. So if you're not die cutting and you don't have this other plate that we're, we're explaining now, the original one, you want to use the, the regular platform, okay? And then if you're using your, your regular folders, you may need the thin die adapter. But the other thing that really is super duper helpful is that blue plate, okay? This is only... This blue plate, and this is retiring too, because since they're going to sell the new machine, they don't need it. This is only for embossing. It's not for cutting because it's a little bit thicker. So it helps with the, um, the 3D folders and the regular folders, I believe, to get it to go through easier. So if, you, if you're like, I'm not going to buy a new die cutting machine, but I'm having trouble, really consider getting this because it definitely is great for embossing, but you don't cut with it, only embossing. Let me move these couple things over since I brought them here. All right, so now we're going to go again. So we have tab one. So we have that second flap still same place it was. And we're only going to use one acrylic plate. So you could use the more messed up one or the regular one. It doesn't really matter. But I'm once again going to put, you can see even when that little bit, it just embossed that. So I'm going to put my piece of cardstock in. And again, the part that has the bend is going to be feeding in. So you want the open part out. So we're going to set this here. We're going to put our plate, just one acrylic plate on top, and we're going to crank it through. Other thing is, so it doesn't really take much effort. If you wanted to have a really, really deep groove on this, if you spray your cardstock first with a little bit of water or a little bit of alcohol, it really makes the grooves deeper, but you can totally see. Hopefully you can see that, there you go. It's grooved. So you can still use your 3D folders because I know a lot of people said um, 
this wasn't. The blue plate is is specifically made by Stampin' Up. So you can get it in my online store. But they only made that kind of as a, a band-aid, if you will, for the Big Shot. Because we don't use the Big Shot any longer or sell it. However, people were having issues. So I have only found the blue plate sold through Stampin' Up! specifically because it was kind of like a patch to help the things work in between. So once they have this new machine, you won't need the blue plate anymore. So they won't they won't be selling it. It's just an in-betweeny thing. I hope that makes sense. Okay. Womake sells the blue... Oh, who makes? Okay, I was going to say, is somebody else there? Okay, blue plate is the only one that will let you use the 3D. Yes, that makes sense. So let me... Now, so if anybody has any questions about this one, let me know. I'm going to sit this here for a minute and I'll check the screen. Otherwise, what I'm going to do is I'll show you how to use the other one. Just pop one here. Okay. So now, this one would be if you were going to use your dies right so we'll put the regular this is the other platform so for a while when they were sending out the big shot they were sending both things which kind of worked out nice because you couldn't use the 3d otherwise but this one comes with a thin die adapter so if you were going to die cut we'll put this down and it's funny because you get so used to changing these things around and then you forget what you have to do with what. You feel like you need a cheat sheet. So just for die cutting, this should work correctly. I'm going to put my die here. Put a piece of purple tape. Put my other folder. Or not folder, my other acrylic plate. And I'm going to crank this. Yeah, so this is going smoothly. So for doing regular die cutting, you see it crackles a lot. We did the regular base, the thin die adapter, little plate, cutting, pla cutting pad, and then top cutting pad. And you can see this pops out, except for the tape. Super easy. So die cutting, very easy. Now, if you were to do a folder... So they say if you're going to do a folder, you're supposed to just use this. Now, sometimes this does or doesn't work. Let me grab a thing. I'm going to put my plate, put this. I have another piece of paper I can use here. So this is, again, a regular, th a regular embossing folder, not 3D. We'll just put this here like that. And another cutting pad and this is just a little bit of resistance which is good because it is pressure so that one did your regular folder and I'm going to show you one other thing about the 3d so you can see there you have your nice embossed image regular embossing folder regular embossed image okay so now if you were to try to put this in and I'm not going to break my machine but I'm going to show you and you thought oh well I should be able to feed this in and this is how you know that something is wrong. So let me show you what I mean. So you're going to put this in. And this, look, if you can see this, it's popping up on the side. Okay? And it feels really tight. You don't ever want to force it because that, you could break your machine. So then you're like, well, what am I supposed to do? I don't understand. If I tried taking this out, if you put in this little thin die adapter... Because you're like, okay, well, maybe I only need one, and I'm going to put this in instead, and I'm going to try this. And you put this through, same thing again. Look, when you ever get something like that that's putting so much pressure that it's separating, you have an air gap, that means something isn't right. So stop what you're doing so you don't break it. So then what we did was we came up with whoops, the blue plate. Call it the blue plate special. So the blue plate... You can see, you would put, again, just your base, just your folder, just your plate, and you can see, whoop, hold on, am I going, let me see, am I doing this one wrong? Mm, big shot plate. Oh, look at that, I'm making a fibber of myself, hold on, because I'm trying to remember now, how do I do this? Nope, not right. Maybe it was with this one. 
I think I liar of myself every time. Dang, hold on. Give me a sec. Gotta think here. That 3D. Maybe this was. See, it's like every single time I need to have these instructions written down in order to be able to get it to work properly. Okay, figured it out. <laughs> okay, so the blue, this was actually, and I'm gonna take this back. This was if you were having a lot of trouble with this, not giving you a deep impression. Okay, so this was for the regular folders. Now this folder is um, still a Sizzix folder, but if we have one, and I'm gonna show you exactly what I mean. Hold on, let me find one that has Stampin' Up! on it. Cause that was more, oh, here we go. For example, this one. These folders are just a little bit different than these. So we can see clearly the difference here, right? Stampin' Up! Sizzix made to go with this Big Shot. This is just Stampin' Up! Okay, so let me just go through to clarify that one more time. So if you have a Stampin' Up! Sizzix 3D folder, what you're going to need is the regular base platform, your folder, and I'm going to put another piece of paper in here to show you, Three, your 3D folder I should specify, put this this way, and is it, nope, it's this one, a clear plate, just one, let me move these over so I don't knock anything down. It's going to feel a little bit snugger, but we don't have that separation like we did, right? So here's this one. Okay, you can see you have a nice indent. Again, if you spray this first, it'll really be deep. You could spray it with water or alcohol in your um, Stampin' Spritzer. Kind of makes it disperse a little evenly so it's not too, too wet. So there's that one. Now, if you have... A Stampin' Up! 3D folder. Okay, so let me just show you the difference between the two. So this is still thicker, right? But it's not as thick as this one. So you can see, hopefully you can see, let me move this back a little bit so you can see the visual difference in these three, the thicknesses. So this is regular folder, Stampin' Up! 3D folder, Sizzix Stampin' Up 3D folder. Okay, so for this one, they had to make an, a plate that would help it. So let me push this back. All right, so we're going to take, this is the basket weave, which is either sold out or is retiring, one of the two. I can't keep track. So we'll take a piece of regular old cardstock. I'm going to put this in here. And the nice part about this, too, in case you've never done this, this line, if you have something and you really want it to be straight, what you can do is you can actually pull your cardstock. I do this a lot of times. And line it up right across the line there. That way you know whatever it is you're doing will have a straight pattern on it. So, just a tip. So then we're going to put it, again, we have our angle going in. The flap part is going to be facing out. We're going to put that down. And I'm going to put my blue plate on top. And then we're going to crank it through. Move this over a little bit. And voila. There you go. So there's your Stampin' Up! 3D folder. Goes with the blue plate special. Hope that makes sense. Okay. So let me just scroll back through here. You've marked all 3D folders. That is a good idea. But the other thing is you have to remember too, if it's this 3D folder versus this Sizzix, then there's still going to be a difference, okay? So the plain Stampin' Up! 3D folders get the blue plate. The, um, the 3D folders that are Stampin' Up! and Sizzix, they get the other clear plates with the other style of running it through. So hopefully that makes some sense for you, but you could even put like a little clear sticker. Maybe you could print out and put on here and say, um, 
for 3D folders, Stampin' Up! only. That way you know that it's only for the one specific kind. So hopefully that is at least a little bit helpful. Helpful. Blue Plate is the only one that will let me use a 3D folder. Kate, even if you had a this one, this kind of a folder, I'll wait for you. No problem. I have plenty of time. So hopefully that uh that is helpful. And I'm gonna grab my my uh book. And I'm waiting for my new catalog still. Seems like everybody got one but me. But in the back here, I'll show you where the folder is. Maybe it's farther in the back. Yeah. So, now these, at this point, the ones that are in this catalog here, so this is the catalog that's getting ready to end, these should all be, if they're 3D specifically too, just the regular Stampin' Up! There should not be any more, I don't believe they're carrying any more Sizzix stuff. And then you would get the plate. It might have come out in a different, I wonder if it's in the tools section. Because I know, I don't know if that was even in this catalog. It might be something you can only find online. Let me pop through and if it is, I will look on my online store. Your Stamparatus stuff. In case you would need it, the Stamparatus replacement pads or the plates, they are retiring as well. Um, I did not ever get this deluxe foam mat, but I'm actually going to order one of those. So I think you should be able to wipe it off and continue using it. Um, another big one, Stampin' Pierce mat is retiring. This Stamping cleaning pad and refill, which I think is immensely helpful. I actually ordered another one of these and I already had the refill. Great tool. Love it. I don't really know why they're getting rid of it. I don't think it was around long enough to get its justice, if you ask me personally. And by the way, too, the Stampin' Blends are staying around. They're just not going to sell them as singles. They will be combos only. So if you want singles and you need to get them, you could still get them right now. And when I'm finished with this video today, yeah, I feel like that must be in a separate. Let me look. I'm going to pull up the online store. When um, I finish with this video today, I will put links to the store in case anybody has a question. I'll put that in the top here. Do, do, do. Hold on one second. I'll have to log in. And I'll give you some time in case you guys have any questions. All right, so I apologize. I know this isn't the best way to, to do this. Here is the 3D folder, so the 3D embossing plate. So I think this must have been only an online. So it's $10. That's not bad to make all of your stuff work seamlessly. It's not like you're not going to use it if you already have the dies and stuff. So that's really nice. So you have item. It's 149658. So, and then there are a lot of, um, a lot of things that are on the, the, <laughs> the chopping block, I guess is what I want to say. Cause there's a lot of things I really liked the aqua painters. There is going to be a new update to that. So that's pretty nice. Your demonstrator. I'm sure you've seen some of this information. What's another one. That's good. The, and then we have the in colors. They're all retiring. The embossing buddy is retiring. I'm not sure if they are going to have a replacement for that or if they're just assuming everyone already has an embossing buddy. But if you don't, it's a great tool. You could also use another um, static reducing tool if you might already have that in your arsenal. I guess that must have sold out because I don't even see it on here now. Let me see for the E. Yeah, let me look. I usually, I sometimes call my son Buddy, too. So I always look up Buddy. Oh, the embossing Buddy. That must have sold out, which is not too surprising. So it is getting to the point where things are going to be sold out because we're getting kind of to the the almost midpoint of May. And the Stampin' Pierce mat, that could already be gone. 
to go down here a little farther. But there's some tools that are definitely very valuable. Thankfully, we'll still have the Simply Scored because that is an amazing tool. If you don't have one, it really does help quite a lot with um, scoring, making 3D elements, all that kind of stuff. Page 11. Oh, that is when they added it. Thank you. It is in the mini catalog. You're a lifesaver. Thank you, Carleen. <laughs> and yes, so again, the new clear plates... Yes, these should without a problem, if I am not mistaken. And again, I am not the best resource only because I like to see the catalog like in my hand to be able to look through all the fine print of it. But you should, should still be able to use these with the new um, embossing machine. However, once again, it comes with everything. So you won't need them because you'll already have a brand spanking new set of them. So that's that's pretty nice. It comes with everything you need to be able to use it, except I think a magnetic plate. I'm pretty sure that was the only thing they said was the, the thing. Yes, the Simply Scored, I love. I love, love, love that. So yours didn't come yet either. Oh, I understand. That's hard. It is hard. Alrighty, well, if anybody has any other questions, feel free, let me know. I have time to answer them. If not, I will um, let you guys go. I know it's a nice day for crafting here because it's dreary. <laughs> not pretty at all. This is like a really meh, Mother's Day weekend of sure. But at least, you know what, I'm home with my family. Everybody's safe and healthy, so we have to take some solace in the fact that we at least have that going for us, right? We have some family time. Just found out the other day that school is officially canceled in Maryland for the end of the year. So the Rainbow Stamper was not very happy about that. He really misses school and wants to go back and loves school. So that made me really sad for him. But I did tell him that even though it is canceled, I really enjoyed the time we've been able to spend together. Because we've been doing a lot of fun stuff. And we've been going on a lot of field trips during the day, <laughs> which is fun. We go on bike rides. So we're having a very extended gym class. All right. Amen to that. Right. It's snowing in Ohio. Holy cow. Stephanie, you can keep that. Actually, in Western Maryland, I did hear that they are supposed to get um, some potential snow, which is just crazy. I mean, really, really crazy. Stephanie, you got yours Wednesday. That's awesome. I'm so jealous. I've been like waiting at the mailbox like, Ooh, do you have it yet? Nope. And a couple people that are near me have gotten in. I'm thinking, oh, I'm definitely going to get mine today. But nope, no such luck. <laughs> All right. Well, I thank you guys again for joining me. As always, if you have any questions, just feel free to send me an email. You can send me a message. You can leave a comment here. Facebook comments aren't quite as easy to check because for some reason they kind of get gummed up. So I really like YouTube much better for the commenting because I know I can answer every single person's comment. So this, luckily, the way I have it set up now because I have enough subscribers, it will allow me to keep the comments on that you guys have made. So that's great. So people can see your tips as well. And if you have any further questions, please feel free to leave another comment when the live is ended. You can absolutely leave a comment as well. I am going to try to do my very best to, not for this just being informative, to do some sort of a uh, once a week at least on YouTube and once a week on Facebook. So I just have to kind of figure out when I'm going to do it, if it's going to be a Monday thing or if it's going to be a Friday thing. I have been trying to also go onto YouTube maybe once during the weekend, but that hasn't worked out quite as well as I would like it to. But thank you guys for joining me. Oh, you have a beautiful day in Oregon. 88. I'm so jealous. That is beautiful. What a beautiful day. In the fall, our kids are going to school two days and online the other days. Wow, Stephanie. That is something. They have said here in Maryland that they might not go back until January of 2021, which is just mind boggling, especially for these kids that are in, you know, elementary and primary school. That is so hard for them because they really need that interaction with the teacher and their peers and Rainbow Stamper's the only child, so I feel bad. All he has is his parents to play with. Not quite as fun. <laughs> All right. I hope you guys take care. If you need anything, I would love for you to shop in my online store. You can go to reachthestamper.stampinup.net. If you hit my um, blog, which is reachthestamper.com, in case you're new, maybe you're new here, um, I do always put a host code on the top of the page there. If you shop with that, it does entitle you to some rewards. If you have interest in, uh, because it is going to be, where is it? 
if you have interest in the May kit to go, it's going to be using the Buy the Doc bundle. So that's also very fun. Um, I'm going to start creating the cards and I did a video and a PDF for each of the cards. So it'll be four cards. And there's details on that online. If you have any questions, you can always send me an email. And one other thing, I am going to be doing my paper share. So every catalog, and I've done this now, this will be the third time, but this will be the biggest because it is the annual catalog and that always has way more paper, which is way more exciting for me. But I am going to do the DSP share. Now these are the papers that are current, so these are retiring. It's not going to be these. But I'm going to do a DSP and a ribbon share. So if you'd like more information on that, I'm still getting a couple things finalized, but if you stay tuned to my blog, I'll make sure I send some information. I also will be sending that out to my email subscribers. So I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. I hope you've learned something useful here today and I've answered some questions for you and I will talk to you all again really, really soon. I know snow in May. It's ridiculous, isn't it? Happy Mother's Day to us, right? <laughs> Alrighty. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll talk to you again real soon. Happy Mother's Day.